Rolling out. Rolling out. Yes, we are rolling out. And this was such such a funny film. I mean, how was it getting into these characters? Because honestly, it was my favorite part was watching you guys in character, in costume, in makeup. And what was that like? It was amazing. It, initially, when we signed up for it, I don't think we processed no. <laughs> the three hours. Three hours. Uh, no. Process of getting the prosthetics. <laughs> But over time, we got that time down, about two and a half hours. It became therapeutic and so fun once we really saw each other, you know, in character. Amazing. Yeah, once that finished and you actually put on your jersey or whatever they had you outfitted in that day mm -hmm. and you were actually on set and you're looking at one another and everyone's, you know, walking in their old man walk. <laughs> I think that's, you know, the joy of movie making kind of yes, came to life. Is. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, Uncle Drew, it's really just a fun story and it kind of just obviously pays homage to something that is so special to basketball, which is Rucker Park. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, seeing the street element come to life on the big screen, I mean, how exciting was that for you guys to see? Man, it was awesome. It was awesome, you know, especially paying homage to the Rucker, uh, you know, with this film and us being there because we all had, you know, childhood dreams of, you know, playing on any stage. But right. on top of that, playing at the Rucker is like some magical that, like you said, Dr. J, so many different greats have been there and got their names. And like Reg said earlier, there's so many guys that played in the Rucker that never made it to the NBA, but yep. yet they're they're famous by being streetball legends, you know what I'm saying? So the name carries on. So uh, this is, you know, a movie that hopefully this uh, is one of the best basketball movies you know ever made and people you know would love it just like you say you did you know watching it family well we get in that conversation of ever made basketball movies <laughs> that's, that's a fire, <laughs> that's a fire. <laughs> We have a whole new audience with the millennials yeah. with our you know my yeah. son is eight my daughter is 11 yeah. and they just really loved it and fell in love with the characters not even realizing right. like who they are as right. people right. that they met them already but that's the beauty of it that we're reaching a whole new audience who's not familiar with the the Hoosiers you know back in the day or right. even remember the Titans right. <laughs> yeah for sure I mean talking about that a little bit you know it's a different of generations when it comes to their appreciation for basketball is the love of the of the sport the same do you think it, it's the same no matter what age you are and your appreciation for the sport mm -hmm. I mean I think with the way technology is going now is giving the kids more of an opportunity to to know what that love is, mm -hmm. you know. What I'm saying back in the day, like, you know, when I was a kid, I loved it because of the, you know, watching it on TV and seeing these guys play. You know, without it, I don't like how we know who who they are. And now it's so easy to get on your phone and look at whatever you want to look at, mm -hmm. basketball wise stats, and going back and watching YouTube old videos of different guys. Right. You know, I make my kids watch the you know, throwback guys that played before, so you guys to see where all these moves really came from. Right. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. You got to know the game. You got to know who, you know. Sure. It's not, it wasn't Curry first. Blood. It wasn't Curry's. And, uh, you know what I'm saying? You know, the guys before then, you got to know, you know, who the guys were back in the day beforehand. Right, so. right, right. And speaking of those young bloods, you know, there's a lot of people today who, there's a lot of talk going around about who's the greatest, the GOAT of all. But what are your guys' thoughts about being called the greatest of all time, given the differences in the way that the style of the game is played, is that from the hand checking to you know today, there's a lot more freedom to be. That's why I try to stay away from that because different eras and different rules, and it's hard to if people want to equate LeBron James, Michael Jordan. People forget about Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, who had a skill set and a shot that was unguardable yeah. right. in the sky hook. Nobody's brought it back. And no one, <laughs> right? I mean, that's one shot that has never ever been duplicated. So, and then the skill set of Hakeem Olajuwon at that size. Yeah. To be work. that, be that talented. So I, I don't like comparing because you can't. And today's generation, which is predicated a lot on that three-point line, yeah. where Steph Curry is a genius, yeah. versus '90s or '80s basketball, it's totally different. So you can't. I try to tell people to stay away from the goat. Appreciate LeBron now in this era while he's playing. Right, Appreciate right. Kobe while he was playing. Mike. Kareem, Wilt, Shaq. You got to right. appreciate those guys while they're in the moment. Kevin Durant, appreciate it now. Yep. Yeah. Don't try to compare him to George Gervin. That's It's different. Can't do that. Or Reggie Miller. No, just, <laughs> just, just saying. Just saying. A real shooter, sniper gang. <laughs> he was a real first sniper gang. You want a real killer? <laughs> yeah, he's over here. Real, real killer. Yeah, sure. We appreciate you guys' time. We look forward to more of your work and hope Thank you guys you. go on camera for many more Uncle times. Drew, too. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Thank oh, you.